The Tinder Slayer, true crime case, enjoy. 21 year old Grace Millane was a young British citizen with a bright future having just graduated from the University of Lincoln with a bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing. Grace decided that before beginning her career she wanted to take a gap year and see as much of the world as possible. She set off on her year-long adventure on October 26, 2018, travelling from London Heathrow Airport to Lima, Peru. She spent six weeks exploring South America, the first leg of her journey. On November 20th, she embarked on the second, a trip around Oceania. After exploring the North Islands of New Zealand, she made her way back to Oakland on November 30th where both her trip and life were cruelly cut short. After checking into the base backpackers hostel, Grace socialised with other travellers before settling into her bunk and browsing through Tinder. After swiping through several profiles, she was matched with a man. His name, Jesse Kempson. After some flirtatious back and forth, the pair agreed to meet on the following day, Saturday December 1st one day before Grace's 22nd birthday. On December 2nd, Grace's family and friends sent her text messages and voicemails wishing her a happy birthday and asking her how her trip was going. She didn't reply to any of them. That was unusual as Grace was constantly on social media, stayed in daily contact with her friends and family. Her parents tried to call her on both her main phone number and backup phone number but both immediately went to voicemail. After several days of radio silence they began to worry that something might have happened to their daughter and then on the 5th of December they contacted the authorities and reported her missing. Grace's father David flew from London to New Zealand and sat with investigators as they held a press conference to raise awareness about Grace's disappearance. It was around this time that detectives had turned their attention to high quality CCTV cameras that lined the buildings of New Zealand and amazingly the authorities were able to track Grace's movements on the eve of her birthday practically from the beginning to the end. December 1st at 5.37pm Grace was seen leaving the base backpackers hostel and making her way to Sky City where she had agreed to meet her Tinder date, Jess Kempson. The pair greeted each other with a hug outside the entrance and made their way to Andy's, a bar on the second floor where they spent an hour and a half drinking. From Andy's, Grace and Jess made their way to the Mexican Caf, another bar and restaurant in Sky City. After 70 minutes, they made their way to their third destination, the Blue Stone Room, arriving at exactly 8.36 p.m. When Jessie got up to use the bathroom, Grace sent her final text message to her close friend back in the UK. She states, I click with him so well. At one point when Grace left the table, Jessie was filmed going through her bag. With things becoming increasingly intimate, the pair decided to go back to Jessie's hotel where he lived full time. They arrived at the City Life Hotel at 9.40pm. This is the last footage of Grace Millane alive. On the morning of December 2nd, as friends and family were wishing Grace a happy 22nd birthday, Jessie was again caught on CCTV, exiting room 308 alone. 
at just 8am. He made his way into the Elliott Street warehouse and purchased a new suitcase. He then went to a separate store called the Countdown Metro and brought cleaning supplies before returning to his hotel room at 8.15. After placing the items inside, he made his way down to the lobby and then caught a taxi to Apex Car Hire, where he rented a red Toyota hatchback. Unbelievably, at 4pm the same day, Jesse then made his way to another bar to meet another woman for another Tinder date. According to this woman, Jesse was very intense but also quite calm. Feeling creeped out by his demeanour, she ended their date early and went home, leaving Jesse with plenty of time on his hands. He took this opportunity to return to the hotel and borrow the carpet steam cleaner from the front desk, telling them that he had to remove a red wine stain. After spending an hour inside his room, he again returned to the lobby to borrow a luggage trolley, which he brought back up and loaded with his newly purchased suitcase. He took this luggage out to his rented car, loaded it inside and drove off. At 6.55am on the 3rd of December, Jesse made his way to a hardware store and brought himself a brand new spade before returning to the hotel at 9am. An hour later, he left his room with a full bin bag and disposed of its contents in a trash can outside. He then had some clothes cleaned at the mint dry cleaners. He also cleaned the rented car. Jesse really believed that he had thought of everything, but what he hadn't counted on was all the CCTV cameras that had been watching his every move. At 4.42pm on the 5th of December, Jesse was caught again on CCTV disposing even more rubbish in a park bin. On the 6th of December, he left his hotel for the final time at 8.43am. At 2.19pm, Jesse tried to return, unaware that officers were already inside the lobby waiting for him. He spots the officers at the front desk and tries to make his escape. But not before being seen himself. He was swiftly apprehended and brought in for questioning. During his interview, Jesse got to explain how his date with Grace unfolded. Tell us about Grace. Uh, so I was talking to Grace on Tinder. Yeah. Um, we had matched on Friday. I saw that we'd matched um, the next day on the Saturday. How did the evening pan out? Um, um, yeah, pretty good. How did the evening sort of come to an end? Uh, there was a hug and a kiss on the cheek um, and a thanks, no, nice meeting you. Um, and then I said, let me know about tomorrow. But what he didn't realise was that his version of events didn't match up with CCTV footage. And yet, despite having so much evidence stacked against him, there was still no concrete proof that Grace, who was still considered missing, was deceased. Detectives obtained a search warrant for Jesse's City Life hotel room. Despite his attempts to scrub away the evidence of his actions, the forensic team discovered a substantial amount of Grace's blood hidden in the carpet. On the 7th of December, Jesse was brought back in for questioning. Realising that the detectives had likely found proof that Grace had died in his hotel room, this time he changed his story. 
he now claimed that he and Grace had a Fifty Shades style encounter. He claimed things got intense in the bedroom and after the pair had finished he went to take a shower during which he fell asleep. He said that after waking her up and returning to the bedroom he found Grace unresponsive on the floor and attempted to revive her. After formally being charged detectives searched Jesse's phone. This turned up some truly horrifying evidence. Not only had Jessie taken photos of Grace before disposing of her, manipulating her body to get the shots that he wanted, but he had also used Google in the hours and days after she had perished searching the phrases flesh-eating birds, rigor mortis, large bags near me, the hottest fire, Whitaker Rangers. Following his GPS signal, New Zealand authorities were able to trace all of Jesse's movements after the slaying. This paired with his search history led them to the White Hackery Rangers. There, buried in a hall in the bushland, they found Grace's body still inside the suitcase. Experts determined that a COD was strangulation. According to prosecutors, such a method takes at least 5 to 10 minutes. According to Jesse's message history, he had told other matches on Tinder that he enjoyed feet, dominating and strangulation. Initially, New Zealand courts imposed a suppression order on Jesse Kempton's name. Several international media outlets opted to defy that court order and publicise Jesse's name running the risk of causing a mistrial. Thankfully that didn't come to pass, though Jesse's defence team stuck with the narrative that Grace perished after a night of consensual misadventure, effectively placing the blame largely on her. Jesse was ultimately found guilty of her slaying and sentenced to life with a minimum of a non-parole period of 17 years. Jesse reportedly shouted at the judge, saying, You have no reason to convict me. I can't wait for the Court of Appeal to overturn you, mate. You're full of shit. His appeal was later rejected. Jesse later received a further 11 years behind bars when two other women, including another British backpacker, came forward and reported that Jesse SO'd them while holding a knife to their throats. Those 11 years are to be served concurrently with the 17 years he had already been given. During Jesse's initial trial, Grace's father David was diagnosed with cancer. It unfortunately claimed his life in November 2020. Thanks to everyone that listened to that case and I hope you enjoyed it and take care.